The AI singularity is the idea that AI systems will get to a point where they're able to improve themselves at a superhuman level. This will then lead to a rapid increase in the capabilities of AI. In this video, I'm going to argue that the AI singularity has already happened, but the AI systems involved are not the ones that you would expect. So before describing how the AI singularity has happened, I need to describe what the AI singularity is and you know what can uh, classify as being an AI singularity. So there are three things that you need to get an AI explosion. So the first is humans need to develop some sort of system that's artificial and able to improve itself. At the moment, we're thinking about kind of like chat GPT and, and things, but it could also be a more general artificial thing, like, you know, maybe in the future, people will develop sort of synthetic computers that behave in different ways. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a kind of classical computer, but these are the kind of framings that we have in mind at the moment. Then these AI systems need to be developed to a level where they're able to improve themselves at a superhuman level, right? So initially you have humans working on these systems, making incremental improvements, and then you get to a point where they're sufficiently intelligent that they can work on their own code and improve themselves. So once you've got those two things, then you'll see a rapid increase in the AI system. So if you have, so, so if you have some AI that's able to improve itself, and you see a rapid increase, then you have an AI singularity. So if you ask kind of AI experts, they'll probably say, we haven't reached the singularity yet. You know, we haven't seen an insanely rapid growth in the capabilities of AI systems, even though there has been substantial growth. Um, and so if we have, if we have, if we imagine a sort of big exponential curve, then we'll say that we're kind of down here somewhere. I'm going to take a, take some inspiration from this book called The Handover. Um, by David Runciman, who says that corporations can be viewed kind of in the same way as AI systems. So corporations are a kind of artificial, um, human created entity that are able to improve themselves. And it's also kind of quite clear that companies are able to improve themselves in a superhuman way, right? So if you have a large company with lots of employees, then the sort of decision-making process of the company as a whole is better than any one human. Um, and so in this way, companies are kind of superhuman in their decision-making and hence in their kind of evolution. So then a criticism of this argument might be, we have these AI systems that we've made, the companies, and they're able to improve themselves. So why haven't we seen just an, an absolutely massive uh, you know, increase in capability of the AI systems? And the answer is, well, we have. So the graph that I showed at the start, this is a graph of GDP over time, and we're not right down here, we're kind of right up here. There's, a, there's one thing that I disagree with in this book, though, and that is that David Runciman says that corporations aren't superhuman. And the argument that he gives is that, well, a company is just made up of people. So there are people, you know, performing the operations of the company and therefore it can't be superhuman. So, so the way that I kind of came up with my opposition to this argument is by saying, well, let's suppose it's possible to make a superhuman um, artificial intelligence in a kind of, on a normal computer, right? So let's say ChatGPT gets to a point where it's superhuman in its programming ability. And then what you could do is you could have this computer and you could replace each of the transistors in the computer with a human, then that system of all these humans working together would still be superhuman because it's the same system as the uh, ChatGPT running on a computer. It's just we've swapped out the hardware for humans doing the computation. So in that, in that scenario, you have a, a system where we know that the company, we know that the AI system is just made of people making, you know, every person can do the job of a transistor, but then the system as a whole is superhuman. And then that, so if you look at modern corporations, then you, you can make the same argument there. I think nobody would say that Apple is not superhuman at making phones, right? It's better than any 
one human at making a, a phone. So therefore it's superhuman in its capabilities. In the same way, companies are superhuman at making improvements to themselves, right? So we have reached this point where AI systems are able to improve themselves at a superhuman rate. So then maybe another opposition to this argument would be, well, if we're in this situation, why haven't we just seen a massive increase in the capabilities of these companies? And the answer is that we have, it just hasn't been as fast as people sort of think that the AI singularity is going to be if it happens. So, so with systems that can improve themselves, you could still have a situation where they're able to improve themselves, but the rate of increase is not sort of infinitely fast, but it's going, it's increasing still quickly, but not at a kind of, well, a minute ago it was here and now it was here. It's more like 200 years ago it was here and now it's here. So it's still a, a rapid rate of increase compared to the thousands of years of human development before it, but it's not as fast as you might expect sort of a, a more conventional AI singularity to be. So then having come to this point of view, you can say, does this add anything? Does this enrich our understanding of the world or AI companies in any way? So I think what we're seeing in the development of AI is that it's, it's not just, it's not really humans that are in control of developing these systems, but really it's corporations that are in control of developing the systems. So it's the corporations who are, you know, putting all the money into developing the systems. And you can develop a kind of pessimistic outlook here where you say the reason that the corporations are doing this is so that they can reduce the cost of doing the work that they need to do. I mean, that is completely in the corporation's in interest to develop systems that can replace humans to do work because then their wage costs go down. And so the global picture of what's happening with AI goes less from a kind of, you know, human pursuit of creating intelligent mach machines to we've already made these intelligent machines, which are the companies, and they're then developing these AI systems, which will replace the human workforce in their companies. And I think that's probably a better way of, of framing what's currently happening. And so the existence of these AI systems has kind of implications from AI safety. And so people in AI safety will say, well, we have to be careful developing our AIs because they might have views that are kind of misaligned to our morals. Or, um, but I think a lot of the arguments that people make about AI safety can be applied to corporations. And a lot of them, you know, the things that the AI safety people are concerned about do actually happen with companies. So you do have situations where companies behave in a way that's sort of misaligned with our moral interests. For example, the exploitation of workers and things like this. And you also have situations where we've made these companies, but we can't like, you know, people say, well, can you just pull the plug on your company or whatever? I don't think you'd be able to like turn a company off. You know, in principle, you have situations where the state is able to, you know, say like nationalize certain companies or just say that this company needs to cease trading or whatever. But then in that case, you can sort of go down a rabbit hole and say, well, the state is also an AI uh, on kind of the, sort of the same footing that the corporations are, are AIs. So, so kind of what we see in the world is like battles between intelligent AIs. Another kind of criticism, and I think where kind of sort of what David Runciman, what David Runciman's position in the book comes from is that it's difficult to say that, that sort of a legal entity like Apple or Google or something is intelligent because you can't ask it a question, you know, you can't go to Apple and, and you know, you can't interact with them in the same way that you can interact with, say, ChatGPT, you know, or as one would expect, you're able to interact with any intelligent system. But it does, still doesn't mean that it's not intelligent. I think you just, I think when thinking about these things, you just need to have a kind of more general um, approach to, to thinking about the problems. 
So thanks for watching this video. If you're interested, then maybe consider subscribing. And I've made some other videos on AI, so you can find links to those in the description, or there'll be probably be one that appears on the screen now. I think it'll probably be seven reasons not to be concerned about AI and why I, I disagree with all of those reasons. So thanks for watching.